Hello again, and welcome back to another week of Daily Bible Study. Uh, this week, we're going to finish up Paul's letter to the Galatians, but today we're in chapter 6, starting in verse 1. Before we look at that, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are here with us. We thank you that you are at work in our lives. Help us, Lord, to care for one another, and help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, so we can take glory and marvel in the fact that you have been at work in our lives. Uh, so, Lord, help us to keep our, our mind, our head on straight. Help us to see the world as you would have us see it. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's a couple passages here in this last chapter. So I don't know how long this week we'll get it done, but we we'll, should get it done this week. So this is, Paul writes, Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself, so you will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, and not in regard to another. For each one will bear his own load. So Paul is doing a really interesting thing here that is not 100% clear, uh, certainly at the casual glance, because he is both is saying people should be bearing one another's burdens, and then he says everyone has to bear their own load. Uh, and he also talks about... Um, on the one hand, we shouldn't, uh, people, someone who is nothing, who thinks there's something, shouldn't boast because, in fact, they're nothing. But then he talks about, but we should look to ourselves and boast. And so some of these things are kind of an interesting collection of things. And I, I was realizing when I looked at this, I, I talk about how I, I wanted to do this with basically very little, if any, uh, preparation, but I had three commentaries on Galatians, and I brought them in here to, to look at the verse because I wasn't quite sure exactly what to do with it. And I think I have a pretty good grasp now on how it should be read. Uh, but uh, so so let's focus on on kind of those those other things, and then I'll re re readdress the uh, main issue. It seems so. Um, what Paul's saying here: if someone thinks so, so I want to focus on this first, this weird part of first in verse four, where um, Paul says each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, not regard to another. So Paul is generally speaking not a fan of boasting. He generally thinks that boasting is bad, that it puffs up, that it's deceptive, uh, that it makes people think more highly of themselves than they ought to think, and so they begin to trust in themselves and not trust in God. And so it seems a little bit strange for him to say this, but I think this is connected to something we talked about a little bit last week. We're talking about the... Uh, the uh, um, the gifts of the, or the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. And I drew attention to how John Wesley interpreted this, the question about the double witness of the witness of the Spirit, where God says to you, you are my child, and then the witness of our Spirit, where we can look at ourselves and say, you know what, you know, maybe I'm not where I ought to be yet, but I can see a difference in how God has worked in my life. And so one of these commentators I was looking at to try to make sense out of things, he said there's a really big difference between boasting to yourself and boasting to Others, and if you look at what the Gal what Paul's saying to the Galatians, uh, they're constantly they have other these kind of false apostles are coming in and they're boasting about themselves to the Galatians. And Paul is saying, look inside, examine yourself, see what's going on here, and then you will have reason to celebrate what God is doing. And you don't have to worry about what God's doing in somebody else. You can focus on what God has done in your life. There's also a sense here where Paul has been talking about um, this idea of. Uh, people are finding and glorying in um, what uh, the, the rituals that they have engaged in, that, they have, uh, that, they're, that they're circumcised, that they keep coached, that they do those kinds of things. And Paul is also trying to say, you know, you should, he was just talking about the, the, the fruit of the Spirit. And so you have this idea where it says you should be rejoicing in the things that God is actually doing in you, the love, joy, peace, peace patience, kindness, goodness, and all the rest. And so this idea of, so Paul is not talking about boasting in the negative sense. Like he often, I mean, he is usually pretty relentless in his criticism of boasting. He's trying to talk about, look and see what God has actually done, and you will have cause to rejoice. But the, the, really, the really biggest thing that I think is important here is because he realizes that, um, you know, he had talked about the fruit of the Spirit, and then he said, if we live by the Spirit, let's also walk by the Spirit. So if, he said, if, we, if we're going to believe in God, we should live like we believe in God. <laughs> and, um, and Which is funny because Galatians, Galatians has, in the history of Protestant thought anyway, been like the great example of how we are saved by our faith and not by our works. And, and that's true, but one of the things that Paul's saying here with the fruit of the Spirit is he says, look, if we, if we, are, if we live by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God is dwelling inside of us, we, we need to also live like it. It's not living like it in order to earn it from, you know, earn our salvation or to earn our acceptance from God. It's because God is at work in our lives, we also need to live in a way that's appropriate 
for that. So here we have, you know, fascinatingly, the one letter that was almost used to try to discredit works altogether from some thinkers, and then you have it's the same thing that we can also see Paul is really actually very concerned about how we live. But it's important that we get it in the right order. Um, so he's talking about all those things, and he says, let's not become boastful, let's, let's not challenge each other, let's not envy one another. And he's trying to say, if someone else is doing badly, if someone else has fallen, if someone else has succumbed to temptation, the proper response to that is not to gloat, it's not to boast over them. The proper response, according to Paul, is to bear one another's burdens. He says, if you're bearing one another's burdens, that's going to help you fulfill the law of Christ. So it's easy to think, look and say, oh, I'm not as good as that person is, or I'm, not, I'm better than that person is. It's easy to think those things in a moment. But Paul's guidance to us here is to say, if you see someone who's weak, if you see someone who's hurting, the appropriate response is to say, how can I help? Uh, how can I share your burden? How can I walk with you in the midst of this difficult time? Uh, that's really where the rubber meets the road. And it's not about uh, saying, well, I, are you keeping the law as well as I am? Are you as pure as I am? Are you taking things as seriously as I am? The question is, um, regardless of where you are, what can I do to help walk alongside you and to bear your burden with you? I would always agree that that's, that's very good advice no matter what time we live in. Uh, so let us uh, finish that up for today. I got, that's all I have for today. We'll come back again tomorrow and we'll continue on through Galatians chapter 6. Have a good day.